surreal is it to kind of, you know, at the end of the game, the crowd is chanting, we won shirts, and one more year. Obviously, that comes with winning, and it's, it's maybe humbling to kind of hear that, but just how surreal is it to see how far you've come in the last three years? Yeah, I think there's just, you know, there's a special connection between uh, this team and this fan base, the way, um, you know, it, the way this fan base, and we call them, you know, the Sycamore faithful because they've really been faithful, the way they support uh, our program, the forest, uh, the community, um, and, it, and it's gotten, you know, this year has been, you know, with uh, um, has been obviously the best it's been, and so it's 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 uh, it's humbling, uh, of course. Uh, you understand, um, like I said, there's just this symbiotic relationship between the team, the community, and it's existed long before I got here, just not at this level. You know, I think the winning, and not just the winning, but the quality of human beings that we're winning with. Um, how good those kids are, like how much they care about the community, like, you know, how they kind of interact with people like they're, they've just got a, a great way about them They, You know, we talk a lot about uh, understanding your power, understanding your platform. Like these guys all understand their power and platform, like they use it for good. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's so attractive to people. And so it's, it's just made it this incredible uh, atmosphere. And, um, and, and, you know, like I said, I, what it does do is, is, is you want to go out and you want to, you want to, you feel a great responsibility every day you wake up as the head coach here to, uh, to, to give these fans um, a program they can be proud of. And that's what we're trying to do. And just to follow up quickly, I mean, it seems like you've taken all this in stride. I mean, from obviously not playing an NCAA tournament, but I see you on, on Twitter talking to the, the John Shirts Twitter account. And it just seems like everything, you've taken everything in stride. Just how are you able to kind of just let that roll off your shoulder and just stay present in the moment? I think, you know, I, I, you know, if I want my players to do it, I got to do it. You know, I've got to be able to, uh, you know, to handle things. I think the, <clears throat> you know, I said this uh, when we didn't get in, um, you know, the true measure of who you are as, as a person is how you handle things that don't go your way, right? So, um, you know, if I was pouting and moping and, and uh, uh, you know, walking around and, you know, uh, downtrodden, I think the players would follow that. If I want them to be able to, you know, you're going to have a lot worse things in life happen to you than not getting the NCAA tournament. I mean, it's a pretty big deal, and we were devastated. Um, but, you know, if that's the worst thing that happens to somebody, they've lived a pretty charmed existence. Um, but I do think that. I do think the true measure of who you are as, as, as a person is how you respond when things don't go your way. And, you know, it's on me to, to certainly, you know, model that uh, for our guys and, and, um, and get them, you know, reset on this NIT because – the end of the day, we, we received a ton of attention uh, not getting in, and then we came in the NIT, and if we had laid an egg against SMU and guy, they said, oh, well, of course, they're frauds. They shouldn't have been in any way. And so, you know, we talked about we came back to practice after losing to Drake in the championship. We were preparing to prove the committee right or prove the committee wrong. We didn't know at that time. And unfortunately, we, we prepared to prove the committee wrong, but that's what we want to do is that, hey, you know, we should be in. Mid-major should have a seat at the table. and you know, as we kind of turn more towards, um, you know, just trying to make it a power six tournament, uh, you lose all the charm and magic that is March. March Madness is because of teams like, you know, Indiana State, you know, teams like Oakland, results like that. And, and uh, you know, you, you skew away from that, you lose uh, everything that makes that tournament magic. You lose everything that makes that tournament uh, what it is. You know, so, um, but for this group, you know, I've tried to, to, to handle it the best I can. Of course, I'm, you know, I feel it like everybody else does, but um, we've got a mature group and, and um, they've, they've reset and we've reset our goals and, and uh, we're, we're, you know, 40% of the way there. Here we got Marty, Hunter, David, Owen. Talk about just that setting that step up. You know, obviously we know that you, know, you can play from behind, you don't like it. Right. No coach does. No. But, you know, you came out and really hit Minnesota in the mouth where SMU kind of came out and smacked you around a little bit on Wednesday. How good of a feeling was it to turn around and go, you know, hey, you're playing in our yard. You know, yeah. You're going to play our style today. Well, I think, you know, SMU, I mean, I think we were a little bit, you know, there's a couple things there. I, I think um, when you when you play up like an SMU is going to the ACC or you play Minnesota going to the Big Ten, like, you know, there's obviously an athleticism and size difference. And I think – that combined with the 10 days off, I mean, we came out and, and looked like we were in mud the first, you know, 10 minutes or so against SMU. And I think now we're kind of back in a rhythm of playing, you know, 10 days doesn't seem like a lot when you're, you know, uh, not, you know, when you're not a player, but like, that's a big break, like from the end of 
uh, you know, the, the, the tournament, you know, the, the Missouri Valley tournament to the opening round. So, um, but I, it was good to establish a tempo. You know, we, we talked about that coming out. You know, we had to really, you know, they're really big. They're really athletic. We had to stretch them the entire 50, uh, you know, feet, the width of the court. We had to really space well. Um, we had to be disciplined, play off two feet. And I thought, you know, I told them offensively after the game, like, you know, we scored 76 points, but I thought we played much better offense than that. You know, we just couldn't make anything. And we, but we generated, you know, really quality shots. And I was so proud because it takes a lot of mental toughness to miss that many wide open shots and not let it affect your defense. And I thought, you know, we didn't let it affect our defense, which I was, I was super proud of. Coach, uh, Julian Larry definitely got the basket there. You, you mentioned you guys were missing some threes. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, what does it mean to kind of, I'm sure you're, you're, you guys, you're giving these guys some instructions that are listening to it and they're, they're making those adjustments as well that the court doesn't need to. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jews, Jews as good as there is in, in, in the league and probably one of the better ones in the country at getting his shoulders by and touching pain and forcing rotation and, you know, basketball is, is all about, you know, creating advantages and then being able to make the read behind the advantages, right? So, I mean, you know, there's a lot of ways to, to create advantages. Julian, with his speed, he punches gaps in transition. You know, he's able to get his shoulders by a touch pain. I thought he did a good job. He had, you know, some turnovers, trying to squeeze some in. Thought he may, maybe had some, he tried to dump. He should have sprayed, but, I mean, nobody's perfect. But his ability, you know, he dictates the pace of the game. Like, there's nobody in the country faster you know, end line to end line than Julian Larry. Nobody been in the country that, you know, punching gaps and getting their shoulders by and 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 forcing help, forcing rotation. And he was, he was fantastic tonight. Got the rim. I thought he, you know, finished some big time plays and really helped close that game out. So it's, you know, defense always tells you what to do. You know, our job is to go out and hunt great. Defense tells you what shots to take by how they guard you. And you know, I thought we did a good job of finding the balance of you know we took 33s and I guess 20 uh, I don't know six twos. 26 twos, so you know that I don't, you know, every game's different, but that was with what they how they guard us, that was fine. Yeah, final three. Coach, I arrived extra early to do an atmosphere piece, and I saw a line outside to get tickets longer than I have seen. I hate to say this since 1978 79 when I was a student. Uh, there were tailgate parties like Sunday afternoons for Indianapolis Colts mm -hmm. games, uh, the atmosphere outside, and then inside. I mean, the crowd's yeah. been great all year. You said that, but I think they've even taken it up a notch. Would you agree? I would agree. Um, I saw the pictures. Uh, you know, Marty posted. We were driving in. It was. I mean, it's it's a madhouse out there, and um, that's so cool. Um, you know that. You know, you the like. I think we have so many people here that bleed blue, that love Indiana State, love Indiana State basketball, that have love it through not just the good, but through the bad times. And those are the people when you love something like that, when you have a season like this and a group like this, you know, you have the mind, body, soul experience, and that's kind of the ultimate in sports, right? Like, I mean, you, you live it with them as a fan. Like, you actually truly have the mind, body, soul experience. And those, those ones that bleed blue, that are packing this place out, that are bringing the energy, electricity, they're having that. And again, you know, that, that is, uh, that's one of the coolest parts of this is to see how they've come out and supported and just, you know, how happy that, you know, there's very few jobs in the world that you could do as, you know, coaching is one of them where you can make, you know, so many people happy, probably not many, you make so many people mad too, but, but so many people happy by, by the job. And, and, and then certainly we've been able to, you know, these guys have performance been able to do that. Yeah, we got to try to filter him in. I thought he actually did a good job. I should have probably gone back with him second half. He made a great play in the seam, skipped it opposite to Conwell for three, got a rebound. I mean, Derek's a good player. Just we got some young guys who aren't playing because they're behind older guys. You know, um, it's not because they can't play. You know, it's just been you know it, it's kind of the way it's been. But uh, in the NIT, with the increased size, we're not able to play small, so it, it takes away the ability to play Jabo as the as the backup five, and Derek's been, been able to play some minutes. And honestly, I think in both games, he's given us solid minutes. You know, he had a, you know, uh, like I said, terrific play there on the seam, good rebound, caught a ball, got it, got blocked. But I mean, you know, he's, he's all around the basket. He's 6'10", he can move, uh, he can shoot threes, he can, he can he's physical. So uh, we, we expect Derek to have a really bright future. Uh, he's, a, he's a terrific young player and, 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 a, and a great kid. So it's, you know, we're going to need him here because each round, I mean, Cincinnati, they have a couple seven footers, and I mean, you're not gonna, you know, we're gonna need that size that he brings off the bench. Final question, of course. Coach, uh, just talk about uh, your trust in the player, not necessarily down to two.
two, not call the timeout, and then just Larry goes to the hoop and gets that bucket. Hmm. You guys want for that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was I was kind of like, you know, I was I was on the fence of calling one. I was like, let let's see, you know, if they had tied it, I would have. Um, but you know, Julian gets the basket, gets downhill, gets the layup, and then we get. I think we got fouled after that. You know, got a stop, got fouled, and it was like we kind of settled ourselves in because I knew going down the stretch, I was like, you know, I wanted to keep the timeouts if I could, you know, uh, uh, to kind of hoard them late in case we needed them for press break or or you know to, to set something up. And and I, I I have faith in those guys. I mean, you know, we play. You know, for the most part, it's conceptual. Obviously, you know, we, we try to put them in spots some, but you know, for the most part, they're just playing. It's not a pattern, and so I trust their maturity. I trust their ability to to kind of understand what the defense is doing and how they need to attack it. And um, like I said, that underrated aspect for this group is obviously how you know everyone knows how skilled they are and unselfish and. And, 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 and some of those guys, uh, not Robbie so much, but other guys, how quick they are. Um, but, you know, like the, the intelligence piece is probably the piece that gets overlooked with all that. And so I just have a lot of faith in their maturity, intelligence, and, and they stem the tide themselves. And we were able to get to that media. And, and uh, I thought guys were terrific there the last, the last you know, to close that game out. Thank you guys. Have a great night.